<clears throat> hey there. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for uh, the 19th of August, 2022. So thank you guys for being here today. Um, there's, a, it, there's a lot of announcements coming here today. Um, some huge, huge announcement that I'm going to make here in a little bit. Um, but for now, would love for you guys to all walk into the heart space with me. Um, however you do that, but I'll walk you through the three breath technique. Um, simply putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire with imagination and intention connecting with the heart of the earth, that crystal sun of the earth, taking in that deep breath of that supportive light and energy, breathing that into the heart and just settling in with Gaia, that beautiful heart of the earth. Next, we connect with source, soul, creator, God, you as essential sun and creation. Breathing in that light, that supporting healing energy into the heart. And next we connect with both Gaia and creation, you. Breathing both those energies in together and allowing them to flow between each other so that you are the conduit between creation and this earth. And you are right here in the physical, in the here and now. Awesome. All right. So let's see where to begin today. I'm going to shut off my phone so we don't have it hollering. Um, let's see. We have some new tools coming out. That's probably what I'd like to chat about first here before I make some other announcements. Um, and saying hello to everybody. Hey, Lee, glad you're on here this morning. Um, Christine from Oz, uh, wonderful wizard of Oz, uh, New York, North Carolina, Maine, Minnesota. Hey, Samson. Hey, Renard's here. Hey, buddy. Yeah, so, um, and David in the UK. Um, so, some new tools that are coming out here. Um, that are going to be on the super sale we're having here in a bit. <clears throat> the healing hands. These guys are super cool. Um, basically, I'm going to you know propose that you get them in a pair. We can certainly work with them singly. And of course, with all the tools, you don't even need a tool to do the work. But it kind of attunes you to that field and that ability and that, that knowingness of it. So what the healing hands are about is basically creating a third field in between within this field. This is all in that the new energetics, but there is extra support in within these. Um, there's all of these. When the first created these, there was all of these winged beings and these other beings you know everything from talk, the master healer, the blues to the dragons to, you know, all of this support on the outside of the field. So they're just hold helping to hold space. Within this space comes you as that star, as that creator being. You know, when we've talked about these new energies and how um, it is showing it that there's that one star that is the human, and then there's that star that is Gaia, and then the star that is you as creator. So it's that Trinity. These are bringing in that highest aspect of you or that higher aspect of you as a creator. Um, so when you're utilizing these rings, it helps to bring that into you. When you do this, like let's say you put this over your knee or over a shoulder and you're creating that field within there. It is you as that giant creator transformer healer being that comes in and does the work. So when you use this with another person, let's say you hold these rings around another person, 
your soul, it brings in their soul, that high aspect of it, your soul, the two souls work together. Theirs is the one that is in charge. So basically when you hold these rings around a person or even imagining that person being there, it's bringing both your souls together and their soul in charge and you're both doing the work. So it's one of those tools that, you know, it's very much in that new paradigm. You don't necessarily have to witness a thing. You simply step aside and allow your souls, the higher consciousness to do the work. Pretty fantastic pair of rings here. Um, so anyway, healing hands, they'll be available here. Um, gosh, the next couple of days. So let's see. Um, ah, the other thing is what? Yep, we did it. Put together the rainmaker in a plate. So this is the echo epoxy, the plant-based resin in the rainmaker. Slim's rainmaker was calling it the rainmaker. Now, originally when Slim brought this to us, uh, we did a blog on it. When he brought this to us in 2013, um, it was basically to clear GMOs and the effects of GMOs in the body. But it was also, we were seeing it sitting on the ground and creating this ripple effect going out. And we could feel rain on our skin. You could smell it in the air. It's just that that energy of rain came in um, with this configuration. Now then, nine years later, we have, you know, all new energies here. So this is all in the Alchemist water ring set is what this is. And these are those tensor coils that we um, just released. And then we put them on sale um, so that you buy four, you know, you get a discounted price on those four for the coils. They're kind of hard to sit together and, you know, it's just nicer when they're in a plate. So when it's in the plate, unlike the original, the original used to have um, a sphere or a tensor field generator sitting in the center to have the intentions. This in itself is all you really need for the Rainmaker, um, but you can add things. So the beautiful thing about this plate is so versatile. You can flip it upside down, actually, and sit it on the table. You can sit five-gallon jug on there, gallon jug, whatever, to charge water. But when you have this setting and you sit it on the ground, it's, it's working with um, kind of like the aquifers. It's working with the water within the earth. And if you've ever seen how rain clouds form, when a cloud comes up, it magnetizes. And that's what this is doing is it magnetizes water. And so when you see a rain cloud forming and you see it start to form and it just starts to draw up all the moisture out of the earth and out of the air and it forms giant clouds, beautiful, beautiful thing. That's what this is doing is that this is gathering the rain. So that's one of the things that the rainmaker does is it attracts the water. Um, another thing you can do with these, well, let's see, I'm going to go first quantum grid points. So the quantum grid point has these thousands of lines that come into it, 13 inch wide, fiery grid lines that come into this grid point. So there's thousands of points, every one of these grid points and the ascension pyramids that are on the planet right now all come in to support this as well as Gaia, because within these is that golden ball of light. Place this on the rainmaker and it draws in all of that support. It amplifies everything. Now the fun thing, crystals. Place a crystal in there. And what happens is it becomes a broadcaster for the energetics of the crystal. So broadcast your crystals, pretty fantastic critter for that. And then the Gaia sphere, oh my goodness. Putting a Gaia sphere on here instead of a tensor field generator, you can still put a tensor field generator and you know it does cool things. But a Gaia sphere really expands the field greatly with a Gaia sphere. Oh, this is the new Gaia sphere. I'm hoping that we can get these released in the next week for the sale. Um, yeah, we're we're certainly gonna try. They might be a limited quantity, but we'll get them released for the big sale coming up. Um, so yeah, it's, this plate is pretty phenomenal. Um, so those are the two new products that are coming out here this week and this weekend, hopefully. Um, okay, so let's see where are we at now. 
we're going to do the water ring meditation today. But first, I now that we have um, enough people on here, I need to make an announcement. Um, oh, gosh, I was supposed to write a script this morning because um, basically we're getting ready to have a huge sale at or below manufacturing cost. Um, hmm. I'll put out a video on this. I need to make a video when I'm completely so I'm I'm already pulling out of my heart space because of what's going on. Um, so I need to step back into my heart before I even speak any further, especially about this. Um, so I appreciate all of you being here and holding space. Um, it's kind of a big deal we're going through right now. A big deal in a beautiful way. Um, you know, all transformations can seem really restrictive and tight and scary. But in reality, it's um, everything comes, I know, as a blessing and perfect and beautiful. So we got into trouble with a non-government agency about three years ago. And we've been trying to rectify it. And it's like... Things escalated fast and got a little bit out of control. And so now we have well, a week to get rid of all the inventory in the studio um, or else basically we're going to have to go into litigation uh, with this non-government agency who's just simply, you know, it's like a lot of these things that are social institutions on the planet that are all about the power and the last vestige is a power and a vestige is simply a meaning of a word where everything is going away. So the last vestige, so these last vestiges of, of power are really rearing their heads right now. We've seen that with like this non-government agency getting all these, you know, new agents and guns and stuff. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, we could go into litigation with this agency, but if we went into litigation, um, we'd have to close our doors for at least three months, if not indefinitely. So right now we have a week to live and we're going to live this week with glory. I tell you, so we're having a sale of all of our stock, um, which we have a lot of stock and we're going to make more. Um, so we have a week to make this huge sale so that we can have money to this agency in the next week. Um, so, that's kind of it right now. So we are looking for all the support in the world. And I know all of you would love to see us stick around and everything else. So we're going to be making these coupon codes and these coupon codes are going to give you an offering of anywhere from five to 25% off of your entire cart, even the floor plates, chambers, everything, everything up to 25% off your choice. You choose how much you want to take off because we need that support right now. Um, God, I got it. Okay, we're done. I can't talk about this anymore and I'm not gonna answer any questions here about this either. Um, we will send out an email tomorrow and God, I'm about ready to freaking cry. Um, we will send out an email tomorrow um, and I'll do a video explaining things in a little bit more detail, but we're still gonna be vague about it. So basically hmm, we're in a corner and this is what we have to do. And so we're just gonna ask for everybody's support um, with this. Oh, thank you guys. Give me a second. Oh, nothing like standing in the big ascension pyramid. Oh my goodness, on top of one of these marvelous floor plates. Oh, get recentered, regrounded. Everything's flipping beautiful. It's just tough when you get caught into your humanness. Oh my goodness. Tough when you get caught into the humanness and the limited perspectives and the, the everything that comes with it. Because my God, we are not a fucking victim. And and there's no pointing fingers and there's no getting mad. And, and in reality, everything is absolutely a blessing. So that's where we're at. Um, 
anyway all right you guys so time to move on um let's see so we'll have some emails coming out tomorrow and we're gonna do this meditation with the um with the water rings but first we'll go through any questions and answers here today and um we'll see where we go from there oh let's see from jr does the new energy 23 inch ring clear out any dense energies that do not belong to the person if they are inside of its field so yes so that field of that 23 inch ring it's it is it's the wisdom field it's um it's the wisdom and everything expanded from there um so i'll just call it you know the new energy or the wisdom um and with that field when a person is is within that column it's going to bring in that support and it's going to show them their soul is going to come in and show them all the other potentials and possibilities that they can choose from is basically how well, i'm having an epiphany with this whole thing yesterday is is that when the soul comes in um, within that field it shows you all the different potentials and possibilities so that when your soul or that aspect of you is is focused its attention into this space um into your creation into this reality that um you know and it's just so focused into that reality and that reality just becomes more and more real so what we're doing is basically with these fields is we're coming to that aspect of the soul and saying hey look there is so much other potentials and possibilities for you to choose from in your creation that you don't need to focus on that one and so it releases its focus and starts to allow other creation on the soul level to come in um, that's just how i see these mechanisms of of what's occurring and so as you unfocus from that you release all of that creation all of the lessons the traumas the dramas the the everything within that creation and that comes in as wisdom it comes in as light it comes in as more consciousness so again it's just dis your soul is distilling the light and information out of that situation that includes any of the dark dense energies that includes any of the stories any of the contracts any of the any of that stuff because none of that stuff is really real it distills the light and information comes out of wisdom so as you unfocus out of that space it brings more possibilities and potentials um so yes long the short version of that answer is yes the 23 inch new energy ring will begin to allow the release automatically of the things um because it's bringing in that remembrance and that connection with the soul more and more and holding space for the release of that entire creation uh what's the best method for clearing inflammation <clears throat> um using any of the fields um so for for clearing inflam i don't know i i really like the the wisdom wand again running energy with the wisdom wand and basically when you're running the energy with the wand um yeah you know it's it's changing so it's changing that energy so everything is energy that inflammation is energy so basically within these wisdom fields and you stepping in to the heart as a master and you're simply saying you want to change that energy so the alchemist rings the wisdom rings the new energy it's all about alchemizing energy so everything is energy this pain the cut the swelling the inflammation um everything is energy and so within these wisdom fields we are asking and allowing the changing of that energy into something beneficial that serves you so that's what we're doing is we are alchemizing the energies and so as you run energy with your wisdom wand or you're using your alchemist rings or you know and again these tools are simply training wheels they're there for you to utilize as a place to put your focus and that was the big thing about these healing hands rings is is that 
simply you can do this without them once you feel that field and know that field you can do it without the rings these rings just happen to be a a place for you to focus your attention onto um so really you are the most powerful part in this working with the tools and so to clear the inflammation it's just knowing you know stepping into the heart space of course always and stepping into the heart space and not fighting anything that you're working on so when you go in you're not trying to you know your soul knows your intention the more you can step aside and allow your light your divine awareness to come into this that's what the wisdom tools are doing is it help to focus our light into that and then it is your light that is changing that creation um sorry guy sorry i might be getting a little bit on the on the more esoteric side of these things but just have had so many epiphanies here in the past week of of um everything and so um you know as brenda said god we're really lucky that all this happened with this this thing um here that we're going into now because i would not i would have freaked out earlier um you know i would not have been able to to handle this so i'm so glad that i have shifted so much in this past you know couple weeks um and that's why you know some of these new concepts have been thrown out here um anyway sorry We'll, we'll move on here. Uh, Christine, I have a golden fire coil pendant and was just wondering if that has been updated as I see you now sell them under the new energy. So, you know, we have not gone through in. I, so basically within the etheric templates, it's like there's so much bleed through of all the different energies. It used to be that, um, you know, when the golden fire and the harmony were around, the golden fire and the harmony were becoming so dang close together in, in, in their energies and what they do and what they carry in their, in their potentials and possibilities. They came so close to each other. And as we've created new rings, like the chalice energy has bled into all the tools um, and these new energies cannot help but to start to transfer into everything. So really, we have not gone through to update any of the older golden fire coil pendants. They are still carrying the golden fire, but innately, they are already starting to shift into these higher energies because all the etheric templates are connected. Um, and all these newer energies are not based on specific cubit measures. Um, you can put these new energies into any of the cubit measures. So basically, right now, things really are starting to kind of, you know, level in together. That, that it's just becoming soup, you know, um, ingredients indistinguishable from the other. And so even though we have not consciously updated that golden fire coil pendant you can so all it is is being in the heart space and holding on to your coil putting your attention onto your coil and asking that it is updated to all the newest and highest energies for you When you do this with any of your tools so kind of like how we've talked about before how you can take a wisdom ring and you can shift the energy of a tool even like a slim spurling tool like um and you bring a wisdom ring with it and with your intention and with those fields together you can shift the field of that older tool same with any of these tools but again what we just did right there you did not need to have the wisdom ring to shift the energy of that golden fire coil pendant you just did it on your own and when you do this and you are in the heart space and you are working with your soul and you're working with the etheric templates both so your soul can draw from the etheric templates whatever is in your highest and best and bring that into your tool so that is it is your tool and of course it can still be shared with anybody but it's going to align that more with you so do this with any of your tools that you don't wear anymore that you don't use anymore 
Just go into the heart, ask your soul to bring in those highest potentials for you. Um, so let's see, JR, can I use one or four tensor coils with the personal alchemy set or three and a half inch alchemy ring? Um, so uh, the, the coils, so this particular setup here, you can use these coils or any of the coils that we have um, along with the, the smaller um, water rings or any of the alchemist rings. So using the trio is a key. So, you know, you might, you, you're going to do something adding, adding tools together and with, you know, you, you're going to create something new and different <clears throat> than what just a single one of the tools would hold. So, you know, you add things together and you create something greater than the sum. Um, but for the Rainmaker plate, you need the three rings, preferably the Alchemist sets or the Water Alchemist sets. And then you still need the four coils. But you can still create other really cool new tools. Um, I'm seeing if I had an activator sitting around here. Because the activator that we have that has the coil and the generator and the three rings, and that is just simply... Um, that was one of the first tools that we created that was made from a combination of other tools. So certainly please do play with, you know, play with the tools and the combinations because they can do really great, wonderful things. Um, and truly this is also in a third template, you know, it just happens to be that these are holding it in right now. And with any of the new tools that we create, um, as as we get more out there and they're being used more and they're just more in this world the easier they are to replicate into something simpler like so right now you know you can't use a single coil and the single ring to create this but you will be able to at some point in time as this field grows expands and solidifies more here into this reality. Uh, Victoria, what rings are best for energizing and restructuring food? Can heavier wire gauges in the rings be too strong for water or food? Okay, so the best rings for restructuring and energizing food uh, would be, again, using any of the water alchemist or the alchemist rings. Now, there, you know, like, there is there is perspectives out there that a heavier gauge ring is too much for water and we've just never seen that um you know i know that maybe in the older energies like the 144 megahertz and things like that that um a thicker gauge ring maybe it because the fields that we create now are much more harmonious and potently harmonious than the older fields. Plus the newer fields are more in alignment with the consciousness of the water. So I do not feel that using a heavy gauge ring versus a light gauge ring is going to have any kind of a detrimental effect on the water. Um, or your food. I really feel that the heavier gauge, like, um, so if I was going to be working with my food, um, I, to me, the water rings and the heavier gauge alchemist rings feel like they'd work the same. Um, you know, and it wouldn't be too much, but the, the trio of rings is one of the more powerful ways to utilize the energy and certainly you can pull the field out of the single water alchemy ring but there's something about the trio and how they work together um you know and they discuss that with dancing with water or something about that trio um that makes it just that much more magnificent so today so with charging your food and in the exercise that we're going to do today with a connecting in and tuning to this water ring trio, you can use this energetics for food, for water, for yourself, for
for everything. Um, so we will learn to do that meditation here. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, I'm going to jump back over here to chat and see what's happening. Um, uh, okay. So anyway, um, I'm going to stick over here to questions because I, yeah. Um, wouldn't just using the wisdom wand with intention recharge the food? Oh yeah, totally. Totally. That, okay. Thank you, Victoria. That totally is my go-to. That's, that's what I use. Um, my daughter and I love to go to a local movie theater when there's a movie that's, you know, okay to watch. And, you know, it's like, well, we eat the popcorn there with the butter and it's like, it hurts. And so we quit eating it for a while, but we keep going back. We're like, oh man, I really wish we'd have some popcorn tonight. It's like, oh God, why don't we just change this? So we go in, we get our popcorn with the butter and we wand it and we are fine. It does not adversely affect us. The one night that we went in there and I was like, okay, I'm just going to use my intention. You know, I'm not really going to focus. I'm just going to kind of half-ass it, you know, and we ate the popcorn it, it hurt again. So I keep using my wisdom wand because it is a tool for your attention as you are running the energy into your food. You know, um, you can change everything that you put into your body. Um, you know, that's, that's what we, that's what we do. And that's what you pray over your food. You send energy into your food. Um, you are shifting the vibration, the frequency, the, the reality of it. And the wisdom tools just happen to be one of the most profound and potent tools for shifting everything. So, yeah, I would suggest a wisdom wand for your food. It is such an easy tool to carry around and use. So, um, you know, the rings are great, especially if, you know, you don't want to use your own intention and meditations and all the stuff. You're just like, Oh no, I, you know, I don't, I'm not into that. I just want to just something to put underneath my plate. Then the three rings are phenomenal for that. But really we can do this on our own without a wisdom wand. And I could have too, like I say, I was just doing an experiment just to see if I could just kind of half ass it, um, you know, on running energy to the popcorn, just be like, eh, intention. Okay. It's clear. But you know, I, I, I need to still focus my energy to there um, for at least just a moment. So anyway, yeah, wisdom wand, phenomenal one for working with food and for water. Um, let's see. So anyway, um, yeah, sorry guys, I can't jump on chat today. We're going to do the meditation. Um, sure to be hydrated. Okay. So we did, we did that meditation on December 3rd for the, the watering thing, but you know, I don't know what happened with that. It was more about bringing the, the zero point of the soul and doing that work because of this, this, the profundity of this new field that we had found the wisdom field and how this wisdom field is so flipping profound for everything. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about the water rings and go into the water ring meditation. So it used to be that you could take a single tensor ring and you could put your water within it. And you would let that sit within this column of energy for four to six hours. And after four to six hours, it would bring water to such a high spin rate and the, the minerals within the water to such a high spin rate that it would actually become lighter in weight in the lab. It makes Ormus out of water. So uh, Ormus, uh, the acronym, gosh, I should probably learn that, or orbitally restructured mm, something, something. Anyway, you can look up Ormus. White powder gold is another thing. So white powder gold, they, they show that where you put it onto a scale and it oscillates in and out of physical reality. It becomes lighter and heavier and lighter. It, it, it oscillates because it is oscillating in and out of physical reality. That is what the high spin rate to water does. So also within the tensor ring, it uh, brings it to its original crystalline structure. It balances the pH, all that great stuff. And it clears it clears the energy of the water. 
because as we know from like the Dr. Emoto works with like the rice experiments and, and his other experiments that he did, but with the rice experiments, especially that you can send emotions into this rice that's full of water and it will affect the water and the rice. I mean, it, it gets all moldy. The one that you say, I hate you. You say, I love you to this other one and it stays nice and clean and pristine. So Dr. Emoto totally shown through all of his research that how our emotions affect water. To me, that was one of the hugest epiphanies when I, you know, when I read that information that our emotions can affect water. So our emotions are kind of like still within this dense field, really. So once we, so once we were working with consciousness, holy smokes, can consciousness affect water? Actually, rewind, we used to do the columns of light, and the columns of light affect water greatly as well. Going back to the tensor rings, when we first came out with the alchemist set, um, we were seeing that with this alchemist set that it was taking that water from innately just sitting it within these three rings that instead of four to six hours these three rings just when you set the water in there it takes it down to two to four hours that it takes for the physical restructuring of the water so traditionally a tensor ring takes four to six hours for physical restructuring but the energetic restructuring the clearing and cell the clearing of the memory of the water all the all the crap um you know you know there's a lot of things that stay in your water you know you go to a municipality where they're drawing water out of the ground and filtering it they're still bringing through the energy so within that water i mean you have everything from um you know the the, the urine of people who are taking heavy medications and that energy signature comes through because it sticks because uh pharmaceuticals create this this energy signature that sticks and so Basically, that comes out um, into the water stream, even though it's filtered, mechanically filtered, the energetic still comes through. So especially in municipalities, you want to clear your water and it clears all that memory, all that extra frequencies and energies and information, information that's in the water. You don't need that information. So you clear it. So anyway, so that does it instantly within the tensor field. So when people talk about putting a ring over their shower head, it's not physically restructuring the water unless the ring isn't, unless they are allowing and intending that it does physically restructure the water, then it will. But that is the person doing it, not the ring. But when you put the ring over the shower head, it will still energetically clear the water that comes through, but not physically restructure. That traditionally takes four to six hours. Now with this Trinity, it takes two to four hours. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the alchemist set when we use it with this meditation visualization intention of bringing in the consciousness of water fully when we bring in the consciousness of water so what we're doing when we gift out headicus to the water and when we um when we work with the water what we are doing is we are bringing the remembrance to this physical being of its of who it is we are reminding the water who it is do you know who the water is the water is older than this planet the water came here in support water is attica the the water elemental the spirit of water the consciousness of water is such a magnificent powerful being so when we do the work here today with this meditation all we are doing is we are reminding water who it is in holding the space for the consciousness to fully come in then it is the consciousness of water that is able to do all of the work and it does it instantly so that is how we are able to see water physically restructured balanced cleared everything instantly you know and in the channels that brenda's done with hedica through the years you know especially there you know 11 years ago or whenever that was first channeled in um you know hedica talked about how we could how it can um totally physically 
clear the water, you know, and for years people have been asking me, oh, the tensor rings, you know, can it get rid of, um, you know, the, the harmful metals and, you know, the, the physical filtration of the water. And it's like, no, no, the tensor fields are only, you know, raising the frequency and vibration, but it is the consciousness, consciousness of water that has the potential to clear the water. Which is another reason that there's really no fear on this planet. There should be no fear for the planet um, or for the waters. Yeah, this planet's mostly water on the surface. So there really is no lack. There's no lack. Um, sorry, I don't know. I'm going off on a tangent here. So I'll get back to the water. So working with the water, that's what we're going to do next is the meditation. Um, of utilizing these rings. I don't know how this is going to go. I, you know, I've been kind of trying to figure this out. It's like, okay, how the heck are we going to do this meditation? And so I'm just going to go into space and we're just going to go for it and see what comes about. But we are going to use these three rings as our um, focus of attention. And so basically I'm going to walk us into this space and within this space, we're going to be able to hold the space for the water. So actually, if you guys would all grab yourself a water and maybe, okay, and I'll give you a couple minutes here. I would say tap water is the best to notice the shifts and changes in because tap water has, you know, has uh, the chlorine and chloramines in it. And it also has, um, you know, a lot more mineral content in it. So tap water is really a great one to work with for this exercise. So get two glasses of tap water, if you would, or two bottles of water or whatever water you have. So once you get your two, we're going to have the one set aside. So it's not in your awareness. So leave one sitting over on the counter and then bring with you one with you right here. And this is the one that we're going to work on. And then we're going to have you later at the end of this, we're going to have you do a taste test, a feel test for your waters. So again, Set the one water to the side, take your attention and awareness off of it. It's not going to be part of this experiment that we're going to do right here with this water. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to walk you into this field. And then from there, you're going to use that field to hold space for the water. Remember here earlier when I talked about these two new healing hands rings? So that when you come in and you are working with water or another soul, you are going to be working with um, that soul, the consciousness, the soul spark of water. Ooh, wow, I've never connected to the soul spark of water before. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that is something. Okay, so... It's basically the same concept. So when you are holding this for another person and we talk about that and about doing healing work when we're doing soul to soul. So basically it's both of your souls, both of your soul and that of water are going to come together and you're going to be holding space. So that's why I'm going to walk us first into this space and then we're going to hold space for the water and allow the consciousness of water to come in and to shift the physical water. All right. So here we go, you guys. Again, just go into that heart space. You can do it with one breath and an intention if you wish. Or you can use that imagination connecting with the earth and breathing in that light and support of the earth into the heart. Connecting the source, soul, creator, God, breathing in that light and support into the heart. And the trinity of the breath is bringing both together. You are that calm of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart space. So we're just going to ask that everybody become a magnet of light, a magnet for your light as well as a transformer of all energies. What we're doing is we are inviting in all that you are. So invite in all that you are as a soul, all of your light, 
all of your experiences, all of your darkness, all of your joy from throughout all time. Because as you invite in even the darkest of the dark, you are a powerful transformer and you transform that energy into light, wisdom, and consciousness. So you are your light, untainted and untaintable. As you stand as that beautiful golden transformer. We now put our attention to the water, to that beautiful, beautiful physical vessel that is the water. And as we just simply shine our soul's light, you already know the intention. Your soul knows the intention. So just be soft. Just hold space. We're holding space for the consciousness of water to come fully present within itself. Just like you imagine your soul's light going into every cell of your body and in between every cell of your body. Imagining the light of water going into every cell of the water in between every cell of the water. Beautiful. Okay. And you can do it much faster than that if you wish. This does not have to be um, a ceremony, but it is a ceremony. The ceremonies are usually for the mind. So we did not need to hold that space for very long because things happen in an instant. So here's to the water and here's to you. So make this your own, your own um, because you know, that was just one way to walk through and do it. But really where you become more of who you are is a huge thing. And if you can do this all the time, step in and become more of who you are. Because then as you walk out into creation, you affect everything. You bring the remembrance to others of who they are. Not just the water, the plants, the people, the soil, the everything. You being in your power and your light, you are then a reminder to everybody else of who they are. <sighs> and that is beautiful. Okay, you guys. Yay, so I'm just over here checking out some of the comments. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, and I'm glad that you guys are having some experiences with this. And yeah, keep playing with this, um, you know, being in that space and being that powerful transformer and reminder to everybody and being your light untainted and untaintable and pulling yourself out of all of the other choices in creation. Because when you are in this expanded space, it offers you so much more potentials in your creation. Because instead of being stuck in one little tiny confined reality, it lets you break those confines of that reality that you feel you're trapped in. <laughs> Within that reality is everything, perceptions, emotions, pains, situations, dense energies, uh, aliens, ETs, uh, entities, all the stuff. <sighs> so you can step out of those confined realities. Um, anyway. Um, so yeah, just um, <clears throat> ground yourself again if you need. I know I kind of need to. Um, again, the 
earth is such a powerful, powerful supporter for us. So ground in, connect with the earth. And know that you don't have to go up or out or anywhere to find you and your light. That it exists. It exists right here and right now when you open and allow it. And being in that space and being that powerful transformer, you don't need cell phone tabs on your cell phone. You transform it. You don't need to anchor columns of light. You don't need to do the energy work. You simply walk into the world knowing that you are in alignment, grounded, connected, supported, and a transformer of all dense energies and a reminder to everybody of who they are. <sighs> I'm with you, Renard. I feel pretty super emotional too. You know what? I've been waking up the past couple of weeks and I just freaking cry because of how beautiful everything is right now on this planet. Hmm without looking at all those other confined realities that people are in and stuck in. Don't step into those confined realities. Don't co-create that shit. Be you and be that light. And then you are a transformer, you are a reminder, and you are helping people out of their confined realities without having to step in and do the work and hand the hands down. All you're doing is being you and being that reminder. Oh, yay. Okay, fantastic, you guys. Um, well, that's where we're going to end it for today. And, um, man, watch for the email tomorrow. And, again, thank you all for your support. And I don't want to ask anybody to give anything beyond what they can give that's not yeah, no, we're, we're not playing victims and we're not. So, I, yeah, I'm just going to stop right here um, and just say thank you. Um, I appreciate all of you guys and your support and your help in getting the word out about this big, huge, phenomenal sale that is going to benefit everybody. So thank you, thank you, and we'll probably see you next week. All right, much love, you guys.